Well, hi everybody, it's your old pal Greg from the Atomic Timekeeping Podcast. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take an ordinary analog clock and convert it into an atomic clock or a radio controlled clock. Obviously, you could buy a clock that already has the correct movement built in that will receive time information from the atomic clock and set itself to the correct time for accuracy's sake. You can buy that already made, just add batteries, or you could take a clock and convert it. Let's say you've got a favorite clock in the kitchen and you like that clock and you just think, um, if only that clock could be atomic or radio controlled, I'd love to just keep that same clock. Well, that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. I'm gonna use this clock that I got from Target just a few days ago. This clock cost about $7. This clock is not radio controlled, but in a few minutes it will be. And I'm gonna show you how I do that, and most clocks can be converted in this same way. So, let's go for it. Okay, first comes the traditional YouTube unboxing. With some boxes you need a screwdriver to get these undone. But with this particular packaging, you've got these discs that you can turn with your fingers and you can uh, loosen the screws just like that. Now that the clock has been removed from its packaging, we need to get inside of it so that we can take the old hands and mechanism apart. So in this case, I'm gonna need to undo some screws with a screwdriver. I'll use a little screwdriver to get out these little screws. And of course I'm going to want to hang on to these screws because I'm going to need them in order to put it all back together when I'm done with this project. Now that the screws are removed, I can very easily just pull the back of the clock away from the front of the clock and I've got direct access to these hands that I need to take off. I'm gonna set the rest of this aside. I wanna keep it clean and uh, not get fingerprints all over the glass because, well, I don't wanna to have to clean it up later. So this is the clock I wanna convert. It has these 3D raised numerals here that I really like. Unfortunately, the new clock movement is not going to work with these old clock hands. So I'm gonna to have to take these off and set them aside and replace them with new hands that I ordered. These hands just press on, so that means they just easily pull off. You can just gently pull them towards you, and they come right off. What that leaves behind is just the bare shaft with this little nut that holds it to the back of the clock. So I need to uh, loosen that nut. In this case, I can't do it with my hands, so I'll get a little help from these pliers just to loosen up that nut. Okay, and that's all it needed in order to be uh, loose enough that I can just do the rest of the work with my little fingers. That nut's off and now the mechanism just drops right out. I'm going to be replacing the original clock movement with this new one that I got from Clockit, which is radio controlled. It has the radio receiver built right into it. As you can see, the new movement is a little bit larger than the old movement. They're pretty much the same size um, width-wise, but as you can see, the new movement is a little bit uh, taller but it basically attaches to the clock the same way the old movement did, just using that little, uh, that little nut that screws on there. The back of the clock here is basically flat, so I won't have any trouble attaching the new movement. There's nothing to get in its way. And in fact, something nice about this is there's little, little two tabs here that uh, helped the movement stay aligned, because when you have the movement on there and you've got it all set correctly, you don't want the movement to swivel around at all. These two little tabs just happen to line up with holes on the new movement. But if I didn't have those two tabs and, um, and, and they didn't line up well with my new movement, one thing I would do to keep it from swiveling around once I've done the new installation is I'll use a couple pieces of this double stick foam tape and just attach those to the new movement before I press it on and that'll keep it from uh, swiveling around uh, the way I don't want it to. So here I go, I've got the double stick foam tape in place. Now I just want to carefully place 
the movement where it needs to be here on the back of the clock and just uh, make sure that's pressed into place where I want it. Now I need to go back here to the other side and reattach a washer and a nut to make sure it stays secure. So here I go, here's my new washer and here is the new nut that goes on with this. So I'll just get that going, tighten it up there by hand. I don't want it to be too awfully tight, just tight enough that it'll hold on there. Don't want to strip this nut, there's no reason to go that tight. So I'll just give it one gentle turn now with pliers and that should be tight enough to hold the new clock movement in place so it won't swivel. Okay, now I'm ready to attach my new hands to this. Earlier I mentioned that I have to use new hands with the new movement. The old hands uh, can't be used because the old hands are press-on and they have this round opening for the minute hand and the new one has a slotted opening for the minute hand. So I decided to try out some different hands, uh, different styles, and see what they look like on this clock and decide which one I like the best. And well, they all look pretty good, but I think I'll go with this style here and install those on this clock and then we'll let her go. To figure out which length you need, uh, you're gonna measure from the center of the clock outward and see how long the minute hand needs to be. On this clock, probably between three and a half, four inches would be about the right length for the minute hand. The original minute hand was also about three and a half inches, so I'm gonna do that. These particular new hands have kind of a clear plastic covering to protect them during shipment, so I'm just gonna peel that plastic off, as you can see here, and then these new hands will be ready to install. The hour hand presses on much like the original hands for the clock, so I'll press this into place. The clock movement has been locked in place during shipment so that the hand should be properly um, aligned to just point straight up to the 12 o'clock position. So I'm going to install them this way. I want to make sure that I kind of press this on nice and firmly. I want it to be out of the way for the minute hand to be able to move around once it's installed, but I don't want it to be so close that it's going to rub up against anything here on the clock face. Okay, so the next step is to install the minute hand over the hour hand, and this time, rather than pressing it in place, it's held on by this little nut here. So I'm going to tighten that nut on there just with my fingers and my fingernails and get that all on there nice and straight. So it doesn't have to be on there super tight. You don't want to strip that, but it just needs to be tight enough that's going to hold it in place. These hands should be pointed straight up at the 12, and if you have to at this point, just push them or pull them just a little bit. Make sure they're both perfectly shooting uh, straight up to the 12, and then double check here to make sure that they're parallel to each other. They're not going to rub against each other or against the clock. Uh, when the clock gets moving. At this point, the second hand is considered an optional item. And, uh, well, of course, I'm going to put the second hand on there because if you're going to have a clock that's perfectly accurate, even down to the second, I want to have a second hand so I can appreciate that. Clock it sells different styles of second hands in red and also in black and even brass if you've got brass hands that you're using for your clock. In this case, I think I'll just go for a second hand very similar to the one that was on there originally, just black with that nice length that matches the, the minute hand pretty well. So again, with the second hand, I want to just press that in place and have it pointed right up to the 12 o'clock position. As I push it in place, it just pushes in there. And again, all three hands now parallel to each other, not rubbing against each other. It looks like my second hand might have a little bit of a bend in it, so I'm going to just gently pull it back so that it uh, stays out of the way of the minute hand. And that looks like it's going to work out okay. So all my hands are now pointed straight up at the 12. I'm ready to put this back of the clock back onto the front of the clock and put the screws back in. Let's go for it. 
Okay, now remember how I saved these little screws so that I could put them back in place? Here we go. Okay, now the clock is all put back together and the hands are all pointed to the 12 and it's ready to start, except one very crucial thing. Under this piece of tape right here is an alignment pin that must be removed before you stick a battery in this clock. The pin is in there to hold the position of the different parts of the shaft so that everything's pointed, uh, aligned straight up to the 12 o'clock. You have to pull it out before you put power in there because it's locking the mechanism in place. Pull it out, set it aside, keep this pin because if you ever want to take this clock apart later, um, once you take the battery out and the hands are at the 12 o'clock position, you might reinsert this pin at that time. But never, never have the pin in there when you're putting a battery in this clock. Okay, now with that pin set aside and saved for some time later, all I have to do here is choose my time zone with this switch here, Pacific, Mountain, Central, or Eastern Time. And then over here, whether or not I want it to observe daylight saving time. So on or off as far as observing daylight saving time. With those switches set to what I want, this clock is ready to start. So, observing proper polarity, let's put that uh, battery in there. And the first thing it's going to do is spin the hands around to the 12 o'clock position to double check hand alignment. Now in this case, since it started in the 12 o'clock position, uh, it's gonna take a little bit of time to get around to the 12 o'clock position and then stop at that position once it gets there. Okay, so the hour and minute hand have raced around second hand has now cut up with them and they're all pointing straight up to the 12 o'clock position so we know that the alignment is now good on these hands. I've put this digital clock next to it so we can see what time it's aiming for and watch as this does its job. Now uh, it's going to take uh, two, three, four minutes, however long it takes to process the atomic time information that it's receiving from WWVB in Colorado. And then once it completes the processing of that time information, as soon as this number here reaches the top of a minute, 59 to zero seconds, as soon as it goes then to the next tick of one second, the second hand here will start to tick and the hour and minute hands will race around until they reach the right place. But that's still a couple of minutes away as this is trying to interpret the information it's receiving from the atomic clock. All right, we're about to reach a new minute here, and if enough time has passed that this was able to properly receive and process the data it, it was getting, then this will start to tick right now. There we go. Now you can see that the second hand is already aligned with what this uh, digital clock is showing. The hour and minute hand will spin around, and as soon as they reach 122, then um, they'll just stay right where they are. And there you go, your new radio controlled or atomic clock that matches an established digital atomic clock that we've already, uh, that we've already been using, two perfectly synchronized clocks. And this one's gonna stay synchronized as long as the battery is okay. Once again, I got the materials I needed to convert the regular analog clock to an atomic clock from a website clockit.com. They're based in Wisconsin and I've had really good experiences with them over the years. They're not paying me to do this. I don't work for them. I'm just a fan of clocks and a satisfied Clockit customer. So I'm happy to recommend Clockit to you so you can do these same kind of conversions on your clocks. Not all clocks are gonna allow you to get into the case as easily as just taking off a few screws. This one, has uh, the front crystal that kind of snaps in place and if I just get in there with a small screwdriver I can release the tabs. There's a tab up here that uh, kind of holds it in place up top and another tab down on the bottom that does the same. If I just align those tabs once I'm done 
and just kind of gently press it back into place, then that one is uh, just a little bit more complicated than just being able to unscrew it, but still very doable. Now just FYI, not every clock can be converted as easily as the one I just showed you. This clock, for example, has a plastic design that fits tightly around the original clock movement. So I would have a very tough time modifying the back of this clock to fit the larger movement that has the radio controlled or atomic clock receiver inside of it. So this is a clock I probably would not ever try to convert. Also, this particular clock has, uh, well, it's very specialized. It's got special hands on it. The shaft uh, between the motor and the hands is unusually long. So this clock here would not be a good candidate for conversion to radio control. I'll just have to live with it as is, as a standard quartz clock. And this is a clock that seems like one that should not have been converted because originally, right here, this is where the original quartz movement fit, and you can see where it used to be. I went ahead and used a Dremel tool and some arts and crafts skills to just cut the rest of this out so that I could fit in the larger movement that Clockit was selling at the time. So you turn it around and it looks fine, but uh, that was one that took a little bit more effort than what I've shown you just now on my newer clock. But that worked. You can do it too. Have fun.